It is off the press. Good morning once again, where we take a look at the program, where we take a look at the national dailies and try to make sense of it. We have a couple of papers to re review this morning. I won't be alone. I'll be joined remotely uh, by a great analyst, Inya Etok, uh, to take a look at these papers. Good, uh, good to have you, Mr. Etok. Ah, it's a pleasure to be on Plus TV. It's just an amazing experience. Thank, Thank you. you. We are more than excited to have you. And this is going to be a continuous uh, thing, by the way. So <laughs> we are happy to Thank have you. you on the show. All right. We have a couple of papers to review. We will begin uh, with the Punch newspaper already displayed uh, there on the screen for our viewers. I believe our viewers can see it. And I'll just take the headlines now. EU open, uh, borders, opens borders to 15 countries, excludes Nigeria, US, and others. Wow, that story is on page 22 of the Punch newspaper. We've just been punched, it looks. All right, Captain <laughs> Balarabe engaged me to cut Wadume's handcuff. That's according to the Welder. Uh, that story is on page 9, still on Wadume's trial. Domestic flights resume in Lagos, Abuja, July the 8th. Good news for so many people itching to travel. Many Nigerians risk sliding into extreme poverty. According to who? Mr. President. Right, we have the COVID figures there displayed to the right. Just to quickly say, reiterate again that Nigeria is at 26,484 confirmed cases of COVID-19, 10,152 discharged, thankfully, and 603 deaths recorded so far. Now, the big story, 774,000 workers recruitment. The federal government, National Assembly, flex muscles. Federal lawmakers, dare Buhari. You can only probe. You can't order executive minister, replies legislators. You have powers to suspend exercise, federal lawmakers tell president. The war of words continues. Now, petrol price hits 143.8%. For 143 Naira, eight Kabul stakeholders push for total deregulation on page 22 of the Punch newspaper. Buhari appoints Jonathan's minister, uh, Jonathan's minister ex-editors, ambassadors, uh, ambassadorial nominees on page 11, I believe, of the Punch newspaper. I apologize, the characters are a bit not quite clear. Lagos ex-convict uh, rips housewives, my goodness, maids to spite husbands and bosses. What sort of story is that? Well, you find out the details of that on pages four and five of the Punch newspaper. Delta top officials panic as Okowa and wife test positive to COVID-19. You find that story and more inside the Punch newspaper. Let me hand over now to our guest analyst, uh, Etok. Please, uh, shall we begin now with you? What story? is catching your attention let's begin um i i wish i could decide on which one but let's go <laughs> on that of uh, the national assembly and the federal lawmakers mm -hmm. and um it's extremely um worrisome from different angles the very first angle is um the essence of government and governance when you get into when you get elected what is expected of you to serve your personal interest, or as in the Constitution, where you have Chapter 2, Section 14, Subsection 2B, that says that the security and the welfare of the people shall be the primary essence of government. Hmm. If that be the case, it means that government is about bringing the, the, the generality of the goods of the people and then getting administrators to administer these goods of the people on the larger or in the larger interest of the generality of the people. If that be the case, it means that whatever government does is expected to be in the larger interest of the people. All right. Now, what happened yesterday was a, a show of shame from different angles. Angle number one is, why was there a problem between them? Obviously, it had to do with sharing formula. Why should we embark on a sharing formula. Mm -hmm. Number two, 
we keep asking ourselves one question over and over and over again. Exactly what is the function of the National Assembly? Hmm. Go anywhere, and I'm privy to it. Go anywhere. Go to NDDC. Go to uh, NNPC. Go anywhere. You realize that there is an understanding of an allocation for the National Assembly members. You can't do without it. And that allocation, who does it serve? It's either their relations or their political cronies. And if this be the case, the question comes again, exactly what is the National Assembly expected to do? And do we really need the bicameral National Assembly? So many questions to ask. Now, that's on one hand. There's another hand which has to do with the exchange between the two of them. Uh, the National Assembly on one hand and the Honorable Minister of State on the other hand. Mm -hmm. And the question is, do we really send our public officers through certain protocols of the office? If that be the case, was our Honorable Minister well conducted concerning himself on the floor of the National Assembly? Because no matter how much the National Assembly has brought itself down in a lot of ways, in mm -hmm. some ways, sometimes, they are still a vital arm of government, almost the most important arm of government. Because before you can interpret a law, there must be a law for you to interpret. Mm. So when you appear before the National Assembly, do you really have that liberty to talk down, to exchange words, to argue, uh, yes, argue, there's reasonable argument, but right. there's confrontational argument, what you may call altercation. Mm -hmm. I remember very clearly, not so long ago, how the National Assembly, the very last one, held this lady, um, uh, Aroma Ote, yeah. and they drilled her no end. And they even literally embarrassed her. Mm -hmm. But one thing stood out, she comported herself throughout. Again, looking at the factors, the forces, the cases, because I actually took time to review it. Hmm. You call a minister and you tell him all sorts of things before the press. And then you don't say, press, leave, let's have an in-house discussion. And the guy said, look, it's like Paul in the Bible. You brought me in publicly, please send me out publicly, publicly. as well. You are being unfair to me. He had a case that unfortunately, a good case badly and wrongly presented hmm. destroys the essence of the case. Hmm. But the bottom line is this. We have 774,000 jobs, which is supposed to be a, a, a thousand per local government. Yeah. And these jobs are supposed to serve the most vulnerable in the society. That's the essence. Question is, who should handle the sharing of these 400 and uh, 700 or 1,000 jobs per local government? Mm -hmm. Should it be the federal government? Should it be the National Assembly or should it be the local government? Right. If in the local government, how should it be? It should be spread. Per I come from a local government, for instance, and we have 11 wards. Mm -hmm. I expect that if we have 777 um, um, uh, jobs or 1,000 jobs, it will be divided by 11 and sent to the different wards. Right. Now, who do you send it to in the ward? Do you send it to the ward chairman? Is it supposed to be political? Or do you have a committee? Should they have said, let there be a committee of elders per state, hmm. per local government, per village? When you have a committee of, like, like in every village, you have the village council. That village council, like in my village, is non-partisan. Absolutely non-partisan, non-political. So could we have said, please, when we send the allocation of a state, send them equally to the local government. When we have an allocation of the local government, send them equally to the wards. Mm -hmm. When we have an allocation of the wards, send them equally to the villages. And when they go to the villages, let them be administered by the youth committee of the village. By so doing, there will be equity. There will be, you know, fit for purpose, and the essence would have been achieved. Right. That is my humble uh, mm -hmm. suggestion to, to the government if they are to take that matter serious and let people really know that they meant well for the people. Mm -hmm. Now, 
that is, I don't know, which other one, yeah. resumption of flight or... <laughs> I, I, the, uh, yes, I, I would like you to a bit, uh, thank you so very much, by the way, for, you know, spending time on that uh, topic and trying to expatiate on it further. Now, there's that piece of uh, item there. Many Nigerians risk sliding into extreme poverty. That's uh, Mr. President. What's your thought on that? That is an understatement. And <laughs> the president says so. A lot of times, I keep saying the same thing. The president does not have strategic thinkers at his back room. You can't have it as the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, even as a minister. You can't but have, you, you know, this back room of people that are not appointed, they are not, they are not known. Nobody knows them. Nobody mm. knows them. It's not what you publicize on the pages of people. These are people that look at policies. These are people that before you come out to talk, they have addressed, analyzed, synthesized, felt the pulse of the people so that each time you make a statement, you just you just smell like a rose. Hmm. And people, wow, this president, he, <laughs> you're telling me, 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 that many Nigerians, mm -hmm. you know, start the risk of sliding into abject Extreme poverty. poverty. Wow, what a revelation. <laughs> what a revelation indeed to come from yeah. Mr. President. It, it is just, it's just, it's just annoying. Hmm. These are people that we were already the poverty capital of the world. These are the people that for the past four months have not been doing anything. These are people that you probably don't understand the structure of the lower end of the society that I can, can tell you because I'm into real estate and all I do is construction and construction works with labor. These are right. the poorest of the poor. People who come to carry bags of cement, carry mortar, carry, you know, these are, and at the end of the day, they go home with 1,500 naira per day. And they live on that. Every day they come back for that. Every day they come back for that. I've been on a site for about three um, years now. And there are some casual workers that come every day. At the stage, I have to force them to open an account. I won't pay you cash. Yes, 1,000, but I won't pay you. Because you have to think of going to the bank to withdraw. Because what they do is they just collect it, blow it, hmm. expecting they will come the next day. And if they come the next day, there's no job for them. They're not going to eat that, that day. These are the people that have been put in their homes for four months. And somebody is saying, if we are not careful, there's a chance, there's a possibility. Hmm. God help us if we don't double the number of poor people because of what has happened. And thirdly, what is going on? You know, when you look at the Nigerian state and government and the way people do things, you just ask yourself, are we really thinking? As at this point in time, how are you going to give, you know, petrol price has been jacked up, they are thinking, okay, bring it down. If you have to bring it down, you are going to have to, so, to subsidize it. Then the electric tariff has been jacked up. They say, bring it down. If they're bringing it down, you're going to have to subsidize it. Question I keep asking is, are we not aware of how much money we have? Oh, no, we'll borrow. And I think that's the most, the most you know, uncerebral thing you can do. Mm -hmm. You know, thinking of cheap solution to every problem. Oh, we'll borrow, borrow. We can borrow. We have capacity to borrow. For goodness sake, can we not sit down and do a synthesis of our past? Hmm. All the monies we've borrowed, have we seen where it landed us? If you keep borrowing, you know, we have these mentalities. Look, I just have four years. Let me wade through my four years and leave. And whoever comes in inherits the problem. And I think that's unfair and a betrayal of the essence of leadership. Right. Without going too far, I think that Mr. President needs to have a strong team of how to get Nigerians that are already slipping in droves into abject poverty out as fast as possible. Hmm. And not a think to wonder, to, to warn us. Hmm. All right, in the interest of time, uh, we will go quickly now to the Guardian newspaper and see what's going on there. Already displayed, and I'll read out again the headlines. 
Um, I, I mean, I'm struggling every day in the morning when I do this to just see one piece of good news, but it's um, always difficult, such a struggle. Now, the, the big story for Guardian, public water system fails as government spend billions. Uh, FCT, Kano, Kogi, Kebi, and all your others hit by shortage of water. Lagos needs 540 million gallons, uh, produces 210 million. Wow, only 10,000 uh, Enugu residents have access to potable water. No water supply at all in Abia since 2007, and we are now in 2020. 20. Wow. Now, Fio. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 yes, go on. Go on okay, go on. I just, I just, I'll just read out the remaining, and then you can. Um, yeah. It, uh, Price, fuel price hits 143 uh, uh, naira per liter, labor fumes. And then we have Magic UTME top scorer speaks to The Guardian. Okay. Uh, Drasa partners government uh, and others to tackle COVID-19. Coronavirus becoming more endemic. World Health Organization cries out. And finally, we have Okowa and wife test positive for COVID-19. Over to you. Um, Mr. Okay. Yeah, a talk. Um, first, I feel I don't really know how to um, relate with um, some young people like um, like yourself, uh, <laughs> because when you talk of water, I think people really don't understand. You you don't see it, and I blame us who were beneficiaries of public water works in this country. Time was, when I was a child, there was nothing like borehole. Hmm. We had water. We used to call it pump then in my part of the world. Pump. And everybody had this, this metal uh, bucket we used to call pail in, in, my, in, in my, my, my neck of the woods. You know? And we go to line of fetch water. That's the only source of water that we had. Clean water. Clean water. Clean water. That was there in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And yet, I doubt that my children, and they are very old, very, very old, I'll tell you, started pretty early. My son mm -hmm. is 31, the other wow. one is 30. I doubt that when you talk to public, what all they know is about the boreholes that we've always had. So when you say that we don't have, in spite of all the money that we have spent, we have, look, with this pandemic, everybody's saying, wash your hand under running water. That's mm. what government is saying. I expected that the first thing that the government will say as an emergency is there must be water in every polling unit in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Correct. Because what we realize is that politics has a way of going to every nook and cranny of this country. They know politics knows the ballot box, knows every polling station, it which does. is stationed in every nook and cranny of this country, about <laughs> 120,000. Hmm. Politics knows. Why can't water as a state policy? Because you provide water, you solve a lot of health problems. Now you are telling people, look at COVID-19. Two things you are telling people. Number one, wash your hands under running water. The mm -hmm. question is, where do you want running water? To wash the Number hands two, with. yeah, wash it to wash the hands. You know, number two, it tells you um, social distancing. And yet in housing, 10 people are living in the same room. What mm -hmm. is government policy to embark on? Why do you wear a mask and go outside and then come back and there are 10 of you in the same room? What is our social housing policy in this country? Are we thinking of water? Are we thinking of housing? We are thinking of wear mask, wear mask, wear mask. And it's like the magic word. And all the monies that have been collected so far, why don't we think in terms of preventive who is talking about? And let me just jump into um, my my not uh, my 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 prayers mm. to the Okoa family. They've been amazing to me as an individual, right. and I know I can say for a fact that the man is coming out clean in no time because his heart is pure and good mm -hmm. towards his people and all that. He could have been in house like a lot of them um, governors are doing. They are they are hiding, but he was in the field constantly, and it's one of the risks of the profession. And I know that because. He did that well, God will heal him and his family faster than he could imagine. Right. But while on that, again, NDA, NCDC have to think strategically. Are you not 
inadvertently telling the public that this program, this problem is for the rich people. Right. Each, oh, the governor of this, oh, the governor of that, oh, the senator. Meanwhile, when Udodo Udo sort of catches COVID, nobody knows about it. Hmm. A very clear example is a young man that lived with me for about five years in my house. And then we were able to get him out and he's doing business, doing well, got married, has children. That guy himself, that guy himself, mm -hmm. his wife, and his four children all caught COVID. Wow. And we were talking with him daily. And the guy has an amazing story to tell of, of how they took care of him and his family, what they did, everything. These are supposed to be the face of COVID. I mean, if he's in Lagos, we're happy to connect with him. Sorry to cut you short. Um, yes, okay. yes. Well, we'll you take up that. that. <laughs> and, and no, I know time will not, I wish mm. I would be at all the time. Yeah. So. No, you can round up, you can finish thoughts. your thoughts, yeah. You, you can round okay, up. Okay, good. So you, we talk of that. You know, in terms of uh, fuel and labor, I, I'm, I'm worried about labor. And I've said this on national television. We are aware with the chairman of labor. We almost had um, you know, a, 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 an altercation, but we were able to manage it on like the National Assembly. So we, we moved it off the screen before we now continued. Hmm. Labor, I expect labor to sit down and do a strategic analysis of fuel. Labor knows every single dime that comes into this country because nothing happens in government that does not go through the civil servants. Right. What is the landed cost of fuel? What are the charges that come in between? And what is the margin that is given and what determines the price of fuel? Hmm. Labor keeps quiet, government runs riot, and then when government takes a decision because they know they cannot sustain it, labor comes up in arms. It doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. Because what makes sense makes sense. What do I mean by that? If fuel comes in at three naira and then charges come to one naira, that makes it four naira, and then want to give one naira profit to the margin, that makes it five naira. You can't sell it for three naira. Five naira is five naira. What you can do is go to government and say, these charges that add an extra one naira, can we remove it so that it can come down to four naira, or can we make it half so that it comes down to four naira, 50 couple, and then you discuss with them, the, 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 the marketers, can you take half so that everything comes down? That is a risk. That's a cost-reflective tariff. Hmm. If that is it, we should, labor should be able to tell Nigerians, look, government does not have money to keep subsidizing. Let's manage and see how we go about it. They don't do it. They keep quiet. And then the next they want to go on strike. Because when labor goes on strike, two things happen. The people suffer and they enjoy because they can do other jobs while <laughs> see getting there because eventually they'll come back and say, pay us our money. So let labor do us this fa favor. Sit down, call a committee of the professionals, the non-governmental agencies. Sit down, do an analysis of what it takes, and then make a recommendation to the federal government. Mm. And the people will be with you. They will know that you are serving their interests. I right. believe that we are sick and tired of all this uh, governance that is political instead of developmental oriented. Hmm. All right, let's just quickly take the last uh, paper and it's, we'll just take one story from there. We're having quite interesting and engaging conversation. We're almost losing track of time. Let's pick up business day, uh, see what is going on there. Why, uh, uh, why we are against increasing electricity tariffs uh, now? That's uh, according to discourse. And then um, we have another story that we'll just pick. COVID-19, Nigeria turns to precision uh, lockdown to halt mountain community transmission. We just have two minutes left. Uh, okay. <laughs> so I'll run, I'll run if you're ready for me. Number one is that when um, NCDC does something wrong, mm -hmm. I will say it. When they do what's right, I'll say it. Okay. I think that going into targeted is very smart, very wise. I give them full credit for it. Mm -hmm. And then when we come to that of electricity tariff, it's like the fuel that I was talking about. And let me tell you something about the discos and the regulatory agencies. Mm -hmm. You know the capacity of each person. You know the incompetencies. We know these things. Let's not pretend we don't know. Let's face the fact. Do you have the capacity, even if it means giving them support, but giving them a milestones and backbones for them to meet? I, I've had a chance, opportunity of talking one-on-one -on -one with the current chairman of um, NERC, and I know he means well. 
but we, he needs to move a step further and get the necessary backing legislative-wise for him to make sure that fit for purpose is the guiding principle within the regulators. Mm. Because so many of them, I, I've talked, I even know the, the heads of this um, distribution agencies, the discos and everything. I've talked with them. And let me tell you something. Metering is going to become a big problem until they are able to resolve certain basics. Mm. If, they are, if, they are, if their overhead is about $4 billion, and then what they've collected is about $2 billion, they have to distribute that $2 billion remaining to estimated uh, billings. Mm. Now, for you to tell them that they cannot do that, they have to do billing of everybody. They know that they've not set the infrastructure well to do it. So it's not, it's not an accident, it's not a coincidence. They know what they are doing. Hmm. But if the federal government wants to get that resolved outside of their personal interest, that thing can be resolved in less than two weeks. I tell you this for a fact. Wow. And Thanks, and it's been a wonderful day. That's wonderful how time. we are going to call it a wrap. Public Affairs Analyst Ezekiel Inya Etok, thank you so very much. We will have you again this time, the same, uh, next uh, Thursday on this program. Yeah. It's been excellent having to talk with you. I look forward to that Nigeria which you talked about, where healthcare, where water, where education was, uh, was really, really perfect. I look forward to that Nigeria. Thank you so very much. So we call My it pleasure. a wrap. And uh, now on Of The Press, I am Amaka Okoye, reminding you to keep safe out there. We will now continue. We'll go into the next bulletin.